Well, it's been nine years since we last had a Serious Sam game, and here we are in 2020 with another entry in the series with Serious Sam 4, which, by the way this thing is looking, is probably going to be the last. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, Sunny Jims, but the reason I say that is because Serious Sam 4 is just a very troubled game at the moment. And I'm going to explain why that is over the next 20 or so minutes, but to sum the whole thing up, it just feels rushed. Yeah, absolutely. It feels unfinished, it's full of bugs, but more than that, it's just got some outright odd design choices. That is a really impractical body design. Now, I'm not going to say it's a broken game, because I don't really think that's true. I mean, I was able to play it from start to finish, but it is definitely not the game I think Crow Team wanted to release. And I'm sure that certain factors that we're all having to deal with in 2020 sure didn't do it any favours either. This is like Serious Sam's AI right now, like kind of summed up in one image, isn't it? <laughs> What's he doing? Look at him! Look at that his eyes on the right! Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> Why are you crouching? What is he doing? Why is he running that way? Look! Where's he going? <laughs> I gotta chase him, I gotta see where he's going. I've gotta I've got discover. Look at him! Well, uh, they're throwing shit at you. Oh, he's going after that other player. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> what is that? Oh, wow. Now, it's important to note that even before release date, Crow Team released a patch for this thing, a whopping 37 gigabyte patch, which will hopefully fix most of the technical issues the game has. And I've actually had to go back in and test a lot of this stuff just to make sure my review still stands up. Watch, I want to see what happens if I shoot this tree. Ready? <laughs> and short of playing the game again from start to finish, all I can do is hope that all of this is going to be fixed over time. But even then, there's still problems with this game that go deeper than buggy animations and broken levels. Uh, I lost my shoe. It's probably no secret, but aside from also originally having a different title, the game has been delayed multiple times. It was originally supposed to come out back in 2019, then they moved it to August of this year, until it finally got pushed back again to September, but it seems that extra time might have just been delaying the inevitable. Yeah, this mission is going great! When you start playing the game, it actually seems to start off on a pretty good note. The intro begins with a really cool sequence where you appear to be taking on hundreds if not thousands of enemies on this gigantic battlefield with a minigun. However, this opening mission oversells the combat and almost misleads the player into what kind of game they expect they're going to be playing. Take a good look at the amount of action on the screen during this prologue because you're not going to be seeing anything like it until you replay this mission again for the final level of the game. But aside from that, this whole Legion mechanic, which they promoted as being this new feature where thousands of enemies are going to be attacking the player, is just completely misleading. Tell me about the Legion system. It's a really nice trick that allows you to have a really a thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of enemies on screen. A thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of enemies on screen. This might all look impressive at first glance until you realize that 99% of these so-called enemies and allies are just the same looking character model over and over. They've almost all got the same running animation, and with the enemies, the exact same appearance. If you actually look out onto that front line, there's really only three or four actual enemies that you can attack. The rest of them are just window dressing. You will take on a whole lot of enemies throughout the game's campaign, but nothing that's all that much more different than what we've seen in the previous games. As a result, this whole claim is about on the same level as the No Man's Sky dev saying that you could run into other players when you're exploring random planets. As an opening level though, visually, this is kind of hard to fault. I mean, it sure starts things off with a bang, even if that is a whole sort of smoke and mirrors kind of bang. Then it slows right down, flashes back a few days, and now you're playing a sand through the events that led up to this climactic showdown. For the first couple of levels, you might not even have any issues, but slowly and surely, piece by piece, the cracks are going to begin to show until some of the later stages in the game, where you'll encounter just outright unfinished levels, and empty, bland environments with barely anything happening. There's just so many examples of how this game is unfinished, but the main one that stuck out to me the most for some reason was during the interior area of a castle I was exploring, which was near pitch black for some reason. I happened to notice that nearby suits of armor were all A posing. Yeah, a suit of armor, even a background prop, wasn't working properly. The saddest part of it is that there is a good game in here, somewhere. The shooting when you actually get to do it is a lot of fun, but the sheer lack of polish is just overwhelming. I want to put him out of his misery. 
For a moment though, let's brush all of that drama to the side and talk about what you can expect if you did pick this one up. You seriously need to relax. So, yet again, this is a Serious Sam game that happens to be a prequel, this time set before the events of the third one. It's a bit of a confusing timeline, and you'd need to have spent a lot of time with the series to have any coherence as to what's happening. But the general gist is that the planet is under attack by a super powerful being known only as Mental. This guy's kinda like the franchise's version of Thanos, he shows up every couple of thousand years and then wipes away all traces of life across the galaxy. Now he's come to Earth. Guys, guys, you got incoming. You've got a returning cast of characters here, most of which are from Series Sin 3, with Rodriguez, Hellfire and Jones, and for some reason, now they've all got these Borderlands style intros. But this is kinda like the Borderlands intros if it was done in MS Paint. Y'all wanna bite me? Come get your Silicon Carnage! And it is worth mentioning these guys are gonna often follow you around during each level. It's not uncommon to have two or even three side characters assisting you throughout the game. Hellfire! We're ready for extraction. Like the previous game, there is a whole bunch of cinematics, but this time around, these are just full of terrible dialogue and jokes that just constantly miss the mark, not to mention just the bad lip syncing. What is it with you and ruins? One thing I noticed was that no one in the game has long hair either. It's either cropped or in ponytails, and I honestly think this just might have been done because it was too hard to animate long hair on someone. Oh well, that's what they want you to think. There's always something undeniably likeable about hearing Sam's voice. I mean, this guy could be reading through the phone book and I'd enjoy listening to him. But the dialogue here ain't doing him any justice. Viva la resistance! Viva la resistance! But look, it's never been a series renowned for its engaging dialogue or cinematics, so I can let this one slide. Well, it's kind of urgent. What I can't let slide though, and a big issue I have with this game, and one that I don't think any amount of patches can fix, is just how boring and basic the art style is. As a result of the game trying to look realistic, it's lost any semblance of personality. The long and short of it is that this clip here from the original game from back in 2001, I think is way more visually interesting than anything we get in Serious Sam 4. Even with its more basic models and textures and dated graphics engine, it's still far more appealing to the eye. Plus, it's instantly recognisable as a Serious Sam game. The same goes for showing someone clips from the second game and even the third game. Some of these areas you've got in Serious Sam 4, like those in France and Rome, honestly look like something out of a Call of Duty game. In fact, pull out that assault rifle and start sprinting around and you can almost pass it off as gameplay from a TDM match. During these urban locations, it's just the same looking buildings copy pasted over and over, along with the same cars and other props. Some of the larger open areas lack any detail whatsoever, you'll be driving across these empty, barren stretches of the French countryside. And I don't know, I guess someone is either really good at mowing lawns or Crow Team just forgot to add in grass and trees here. And again, compare this to something in, I don't know, Serious Sam 2. Interior areas don't look any better either. Now, I know you're not supposed to be looking inside all of these, but that's also the attitude it seems the level designers have taken too. It's all just so haphazard and sloppy, and again, like compare it to some of the pyramid interiors from the first game, where the shadows become almost artistic. Then you've got the other characters who honestly look like default playable classes from some kind of generic military shooter. You know what I mean? They look like the base character that you'd unlock before you go in and customize their outfits and appearance. Yeah, yeah. Somehow characters like Rodriguez and Jones also look worse than their Serious Sam 3 counterparts. I mean, look at Hellfire in Serious Sam 3, and now check her out in Serious Sam 4 and try to tell me that she looks better now. I dare you. Hey boys, did you miss me? Oh, and the eyes in this game? My god, son. I don't know what's happening with everyone's eyes in this thing. <laughs> but a huge running theme that caught on quick when I was playing with a mate of mine was playing spot the wonky eyes on the characters. Needless to say, we were kept pretty busy. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the eyelids are fucked. <laughs> Still, I guess complaining about these might be a bit of a moot point on some level because if nothing else, you can at least skip all of the cinematics. Just with the downside of not knowing what's supposed to be happening in the grand scheme of things. Not that it'll matter anyway, I guess, because now you've got objective markers to show you where to go next. Yeah, you've got a yellow one showing you where your next main objective is, along with a blue one to show side missions, because, yeah, that's a thing now. Enemies also have health bars, though I don't actually mind this one too much, because it makes it easier tracking how close to death the tougher enemies are. And again, if you don't like this, like the objective markers, that can also be turned off in the options menu anyway. Uh, agreed. Otherwise, Serious Sam 4 doesn't try to mix things up too much when it comes to the enemies and the weapons. There's almost something kind of comforting about seeing the same enemies and guns all over again. In fact, it'd almost be weird if we didn't. 
you'll still be taking on the Nars, the Reptiloids and Arachnoids. Not to mention droves and droves of the various beheaded enemies, kamikazes being one of the most instantly recognizable. And nothing clenches up that butthole faster than seeing a bunch of these guys screaming and running towards you. I love it. Thankfully, they've also gotten rid of the hit scanning shotgunners and assault rifle enemies from the last game, which is also a huge step in the right direction. Because let me tell you, those guys absolutely sucked. You've got the clears, which I've always hated with a burning passion. Then the werebulls, another tough enemy that really reinforces how important movement is in this game. And a couple of new additions, one of which being literal vampires. Yeah, Nosferati looking dudes that teleport around and blatantly telegraph their positions, making it pretty easy to just lie in wait with the coach gun. And a couple of new foot soldier variants, former humans in orange jumpsuits that look like the puppets out of Thief Deadly Shadows and rush at you with their ghetto wolverine claws. There's also big executioner looking guys with sledgehammers who only take bullet damage if shot in the back, but are still damaged by explosives if shot in the front. And finally, these big fat assholes that launch fireball artillery strikes and fly around on jetpacks. Looking like a cross between something in Wolfenstein and Killing Floor 2. Onto the weapons, again this is a bit of a tried and tested formula, beginning with Sam's Desert Eagle. You've then got the shotgun and the coach gun, the assault rifle and the minigun, along with the grenade and the rocket launcher. It's classic. You still have to reload the assault rifle to name down the sights though to make it more accurate, which is still about the most unserious Sam thing in the entire game, but honestly, that's the least of this game's problems. Instead of the sledgehammer from Serious Sam 3, now instead you've got a knife. That's not a knife. But you'd be better off using this thing to butter some crumpets. And the melee kills made with this thing don't even get blood across the screen anymore either, which is just lame. As well as those, you've got the sniper rifle, the devastator grenade launcher, and eventually you'll get the cannon and the laser gun, but yeah, don't hold your breath. You get both of those weapons on literally the third or so last level of the game, of which there is 16. They might come up earlier in secret areas, to be honest, I never looked that much, but there's also two instances when the story takes away all of your weapons. So either way, you won't put them to all that much use. And then there's a new weapon in the form of an auto shotgun, which just kind of looks like the Devastator Grenade Launcher, but I think might be one of my favorite guns to use when they actually give you ammo for it. New mechanics here include alternate fire modes for some of the weapons, like the shotgun can get a grenade launching attachment, the rocket launcher's got a lock-on mode similar to the one from Doom Eternal, and eventually the laser gun gets a death ray mode, which is amazing and shreds through everything. But again, these are taken away from you during key points in the story, so you don't get to put them to as much use as you really should. You'll also collect orbs throughout some of the levels which can be spent on upgrading Sam, so things like being able to melee kill the tougher enemies, which is a feature returning from the third game. Though this time the melee animations are absolutely woeful in comparison. You can pick up objects from the environments and also use them as melee weapons, which is about the most useless mechanic in the entire game. But more importantly, there's an upgrade that allows you to dual wield weapons. Eventually, you can upgrade this to dual wield even rocket launchers and miniguns, and this should be awesome, but once you start dual welding, your accuracy goes out the window and your shots go all over the place. But at least dual wielding the coach guns is pretty fun, it kind of reminds me of playing Blood 2. <laughs> For some reason too, there's an upgrade where you can hop onto the back of some enemies and ride them around, which is usually more trouble than it's worth. But having said that, riding around on the back of a werebull and shooting the cannon at a dozen enemies chasing after me was a definite highlight of the campaign. So, I don't know, it's not an entirely wasted skill point. Side quests offer up extra content in the form of these little side areas you can head off to, usually just to blast through a couple of dozen enemies to obtain some kind of gadget. And I have to admit that some of these gadgets are pretty damn fun. There's a very Duke Nukem 3D inspired holographic decoy that hovers around, attracts nearby enemies and then explodes. There's nerve gas that seems to cause enemies to infight, a berserk mode power up that gives you increased speed and damage, and a device that shoots out a bubble around you that stops time. Or I don't know, how about a goddamn black hole generator that sucks all nearby enemies in before exploding and then turning them into liquid. You can even get a tactical nuke, which will kill pretty much every single enemy in the nearby area. I don't know why it automatically swaps back to the assault rifle after you use one of these, but using these is always a spectacle and a definite lifesaver if used correctly. 
So all up, as a fair weather serious Sam fan, it's kind of hard to fault the gunplay. And I found the shooting to be one of the most refined elements of the entire game, at least in the sense of it being the most consistent. So if all you wanted to do in the game was shoot a bunch of enemies and the current laundry list of bugs doesn't bother you, well, then I guess there is at least hope for this thing in that sense. There are some things that piss me off though, like the projectile speed of the rocket launcher is definitely slower, along with the speed for the Devastator. Weapon swapping speed is also slightly slower too, and you can't sprint and reload weapons anymore until you first unlocked it as an upgrade, which is a fucking cardinal sin for a Serious Sam game. I mean, weapon reloading alone kinda sucks, but not being able to sprint and reload is like rubbing citric acid into a goddamn hemorrhoid. I... I don't even know what to say. There's still areas where they definitely seem to scrimp on health and ammo pickups, which kinda makes fighting back-to-back -back waves a pain in the sphincter. But like I said, I think the combat is still the most refined in the way that it feels like it's had the most effort put into it. You get pretty decent feedback when hitting enemies, there's great blood and gore effects, and when they do ramp up the enemy count so it resembles an actual Serious Sam game, it's kinda hard to not enjoy yourself. It's just a shame I can't say the same for pretty much every other aspect of the game. Hey boys, did you miss me? Now this is where results I think will start to vary for everybody playing, and some of my complaints might not even be valid anymore, depending on how quickly Crow Team can address all of this. But all I can talk about is the experience I had playing this before launch, and then after that initial patch they dropped. This may be our final mission. In terms of the performance, this thing is an inconsistent mess. I had the game installed on an SSD drive, and it was still very choppy for me, regardless of what settings I had it on. I've got an RTX 2070, 16GB of RAM, and an i7 6700K. I mean, not the best rig anymore, but on the optimal settings, it should at least be stable. It wasn't. Even then, though, I've got a mate who was playing this with a 3080, and he's having similar performance issues. It's just not justified to be running as bad as it does, considering it doesn't look all that amazing. Some of the outside areas look okay, I guess, but the interiors, like I said before, just look atrocious. Kinda looks like something from an early Xbox 360 or PS3 game, like an early Unreal Engine 3 title, with blurry textures, minimal lighting, and just lazy ambient occlusion. Like right here. It's just like a blank texture with, like, no detail. Yep. I think what they've done here is just include one light source on each level, which happens to be the sun, which yeah, makes sense, but then when you go into buildings, there's no interior light sources added in, so everything just looks kind of flat. Now, I know Sirius Sam 3 did the same thing, but that time they made clever use of the light streaming in from the outside to compensate for this. I mean, just look at how good some of these indoor environments look from the third game. The water effects are minimal and dated, and check out this effect when you yep. demolish trees. God, it looks so bad. I'm... Oh. Kinda reminds me of one of those early access survival games you'd pick up on Steam. And it's kind of outright pathetic that it looks worse off in a lot of ways than Serious Sam 3, a 9 year old game. There's rooms and environments where it just looks like the lighting hasn't even been rendered in properly. You'll see these dark pitch black shadows in contrast to something right next to it that's clearly visible and in perfect light. The texture popping and streaming is also another huge issue here. And this has also happened to the three other people I played this with, so it's really not a GPU issue or something else on my end. Animation glitches for enemies are frequent, along with just basic pathfinding. What the fuck? You'll see these guys often getting stuck in walls or trees, unable to even reach the player. Now I know the AI in these games has never been a paragon of intelligence, I mean one of the main enemy forces is literally missing its head. But at least in the old games, if enemies got stuck on something, it was when you tried to make that happen. They didn't really do it of their own accord. I've had cinematics that oh, full on glitched out, where doors don't even open, causing people to clip through them entirely. Weapon animations look sloppy and basic. <laughs> During combat, you'll see enemies floating in midair, and on top of that, during a couple of instances, I could see through an entire building and out to the skybox behind it. You'll see the same looking cars and buildings pasted over and over during those urban levels. And even something as basic as shooting out the windows in some of these vehicles is impossible. In fact, you can't even shoot out any of the windows at all. I mean, when did the inclusion of basic environmental interaction become an oversight? Now, maybe these are the kind of things that could be fixed with updates and patches, but there's still issues I came across that no amount of updates is going to rectify. The main one being that the whole thing is just often so boring. Nonsense! Starting off with the music, which I found to be so unremarkable and dull to listen to, which is kind of doubly disappointing because it's composed by the same guy who's worked on most of the series up until this point. They've been really careful with what tracks they've released online, but once you finally get into the game, you'll start to hear just how mediocre a lot of this stuff really is. Serious Sam 4 falls into that same trap as the other games. 
in which it kind of takes a fair bit to get going, but unlike the other ones, when it finally reaches full tilt, it can't seem to hold that pace and it drops right off. You'd expect the first few levels to be a bit slower to let the players come to grips with how the weapons and all the enemies work, which is fair. Even though that at this point, I'd say 99% of the people playing this are those who are probably more than familiar with the series at this point. Then there's a bit where they finally give you the minigun to keep and you've got this short sequence where dozens of clears and drones rush you on this bridge. And it's awesome, even if it only lasts for a couple of minutes. There you go. That's more like it. After that, you're outside the Colosseum where you're swarmed by dozens and dozens of enemies. And again, for a few brief minutes, the game becomes everything you wanted it to be. But then it's ruined shortly after that because it does that typical Serious Sam thing where it changes the location and takes away all of your guns. Now you're just driving around this generic looking French countryside that honestly to me looked like a PUBG map or something. Driving what looks like an asset library motorbike across these unremarkable empty fields. This I think is one of the most uninspired looking locations in, I don't know, probably the entire series. And I think the reason why the area is so boring is because you could honestly show someone a screenshot of this and they wouldn't even know it's a Serious Sam game. Turn off that heads up display and just show the backdrop and it could be anything. Nonsense! During this level, I thought I'd take a detour down the opposite side of the road, you know, just to see where it went. Basically, instead of turning right where I had to go, I turned left. After driving for roughly six or seven kilometers, which took me, I don't know, maybe five to 10 minutes, I came to a collapsed tunnel. No sign or anything, no meta joke acknowledging I just wasted the last 10 minutes of my life, just a crumbled, caved in tunnel. Heading right though towards the end of this level, you'll hop into a combine harvester and drive across the countryside, turning Mental's forces into paste as you mince them all up. It's pretty damn hilarious and an absolute highlight of the entire campaign. And both of these situations perfectly encapsulate the constant struggle this game has with itself. Where you can see those moments where the game could have been so much more. The moments like when you're inside the Pope Mobile, that giant mech suit that lets you power through the streets of Rome, firing machine guns and rockets at enemies that are so small they may as well be ants. And don't you think it's funny that they pretty much only showed these levels off in the preview videos? I mean, what happened to Planet Badass? This is Planet Mediocre. It's a really nice trick. I don't know, man. I just... I don't know what to make of this fucking thing. Serious Sam 4 is definitely a game that shines in co-op, like pretty much every other game in the series, and thankfully this has pretty stable co-op support. For some reason though, there's only four co-op models to choose from. Now, I don't know if this is just like a pre-launch thing and they're adding these in later, but four skins? One of the best parts about co-op in the other games has been being able to choose from so many different skins to play as with your buddies. Here it's only four and they're all just derivatives of Sam anyway. At least the options for the co-op mode are extensive, and like I've said a whole lot before, to the point of people ridiculing me for it, this game is fun with friends. <laughs> Overall, it's a damn shame. It really is. This should have been one of the best shooters to come out in 2020. I can honestly say I was expecting it to be. Considering this is the first Serious Sam game we've had since 2011, the way this thing has turned out, it might be the last, and that hurts even more. I don't know if it was just a case of them not having ideal development conditions because of all the limitations happening with COVID, but I highly doubt this is the game they wanted to release, and I'd be very surprised if they tried to defend it either. Honestly, I've always thought that this was a series that's aged in reverse. The first game, in my opinion, is the best in this series, followed by the second encounter and the next encounter on the GameCube. And then since then, it's all just slowly declined. Each iteration has just kind of been Crotein throwing shit at a wall and hoping it sticks. So it makes sense for this to be the weakest in this series just off that alone. That Legion mechanic at least looked like it might have kicked some more life into the series. But even then, that seems to have basically just been a marketing ploy to get people interested in the game when ultimately, it's not even fully utilized. Uh, thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of enemies on screen. During the last level in the game, before the final confrontation, you are going to take on a whole heap of enemies, and this is about the only time you could argue that they're really pushing the limits of what the engine could do. But again, it's really not that much more than what we've seen in previous games, and it's nowhere near the hundreds or thousands we were promised. I genuinely hope that if nothing more, at least all of the bugs I'm talking about in this game become redundant someday, and that people can watch this and be like, what the hell's this guy talking about? But right now, this is a bit of a disaster. Wow. <laughs> His arm's fucked. Look at my arm when I do it. Look at my shoulder. <laughs> It's like watching your childhood hero getting interviewed on live television and having his pants fall down or something. Karma's a bitch! I really feel bad for Crow Team here and I hope that they can work the game out of this slump, but right now from what I've played, this seriously ain't all that good.
and there's a swan song for Sam's escapades, that's a bit of a tough pill to swallow. Sam just deserves so much better than this. I mean, we all did. So Sam can still pleasantly surprise you? Yeah. 